Just put it, walk I guess, in, like walk here. In front. Or in front or somewhere. Go I mean, behind. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh it my is god. so creepy. I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a little I'm gonna yeah, give it a little kick. I'm gonna give it a little nudge. Doesn't matter where I do it. No. It's kind of beat up, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> to Mischief Auto Body Shop. Come look at our expensive collection. We have cars. They are good. Go look at them. We have clothing. The Tube Man shirt. We have sweaters. A very good hoodie. And another shirt. All for the low, low price of whatever you want to pay. And come on down. And we, do we say it all together? This shit is crazy. One, two, three. And. Okay, so you guys have decimated Damien Harris pennies. You've chopped them up, sold them individually. You guys have put Axe into Chanel number no. five bottles. You guys are doing crazy shit across the board. What is the ethos? What is the design process, the ideation? What does it look like when you go into a project? Mm -hmm. When you look at sort of like, we look at materials in a different way, right? You just talked mm -hmm. about Axe Number 5 and Severed Spots, and yeah. we look at a Damien Hirst painting, everyone else in the world will see like, oh, let's put this on our wall, this is the final product. Yeah. We look at that as a material, right? Yeah. People will look at Axe and Chanel, these are products to use. We look at it as material, right? We, we could talk about like, shoes or mischief x but a lot of our drops we look at or birkenstocks we look at these final products that people kind of hold in this holy spot no, nothing mm. is sacred nothing mm. is sacred that is literally our like internal tagline like mm. if you think you can't touch it we're yeah. like we're gonna go fuck, fuck it up a little bit you take you reinterpret the value you put it on a little pedestal and you let people make their own or assign their own value to it and i feel like that kind of ties into what's going on here with this drop I mean, if you think about it, what's the difference between a $5, you know, Gildan tee and the $500 Gucci white tee? You look at sort of the world of fashion and people wear what they want because it's a flex, right? Like we talk about going from this $0 to the $600 price, you might think, oh, why would everyone not want the lower end stuff? But then I would ask you, do you want to go to the club wearing a $1 t-shirt? Mm -hmm. Is that what you want people to see you as, or do you want to be like, yeah, Absolutely I dropped not. 500 bucks on this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this setup. This is so goofy. <laughs> That's why it's great. The, the thing with Mischief Drops is that you shouldn't look at them as individual products and evaluate them like a shirt or a pair of shoes. When we're putting these things out into the world, it is all in service to the concept, right? So you want to look at the entire drop as essentially like a performance art piece where modern internet capitalism is the medium we're working in and not like it's a product line where you evaluate each shirt or each shoe on its own merits. You want to look at the entire thing as a single piece and that includes how people react to it, what they talk about coming out of that, those conversations that happen in the press and, and in social and all of that. Wow. So is it yeah. kind of like a bidding system then? Or is the website going to have it, like... It, it's all open, all prices are available immediately. Just go in and, and get what you want. But once you buy that price, it's done. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Is there a sort of like metric for success when you do a drop? Or do you go into everything on a clean slate, you know? Up for this uh, car. Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, similar to what Lucas said, again, we, 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 we do say internally nothing is sacred. And we'll touch stuff that other brands and people just won't touch and obviously again everyone saw it like we flew too close to the sun we did get sued by nike we uh we went up there and like, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah please don't say that on record uh there's an article in the new york times from when we did jesus shoes back in 2019 that our buddy kevin who you met earlier said damn i really wish nike sued us well that came back two years later you know, I when you're making these people uncomfortable, I think mm -hmm. it says that we're doing at least something right in, in that sense. 100%. Yeah. Nike's an interesting case because, right, this is, it's, I've heard people say if Earth had a brand, it would probably be Nike. Or Coca Cola. And, you know, or the Catholic Church. And uh, Nike, there's some tension with, you know, people redesigning shoes, people 
modifying shoes. How did you approach the Satan sneaker or the Jesus Walks on Water sneaker with that in mind? I was gonna say, so Lucas, you have a, a nice phrase, which is the idea of, of cultural ready-made. It's kind of like taking two very recognizable objects, phenomena, ideas, brands, and using them as building blocks to, to mash together. Um, and so when we're thinking about what we want to go after, we're looking at kind of what are the juiciest building blocks that you can pull. Um, so when Dan's talking about, you know, Satan and Jesus, you want to talk about a strong cultural building block, those Juicy are great. Um, How do you take this collaboration culture to its evolutionary end? What is sort of this like, collab to end all collabs, the impossible collab, like the king collab of everything. And we sort of, again, a lot of ideas bounced around. But what we kept coming back to is this idea of Jesus, right? Like if Jesus did a sneaker, that would have been the collab to end all collabs, right? You beat out Travis Scott and LeBron James because Jesus is Jesus, right? And uh, he does, he does, obviously he's dead, but he does the sneaker, right? <laughs> They're pretty crazy. But yeah, so you could see obviously like, you got all these nice parts, right? You got the Matthew 1425, you got your cross, mm -hmm. drip of blood, mm -hmm. mischief on the mischief. back yeah. on this one. And then you got this uh, this soul that is scented. Yeah, yeah, we've got oh, a wool yeah. a wool insole with a bunch of frankincense spritzed on it. Uh, I mean, and the and, uh, and the water, the water the water is sourced straight from the River Jordan, so it's yeah. holy water. It's incredible. That was in 2019, and here we are. Anyone watching this has probably heard of these, but these are the infamous uh, Satan Seekers, uh, Bishop and Lil Nas X, and we were really going for a mirror image of each, right? If you look, mm. the verses here, there's still something here, there's still something here, the box. Like, we were we were definitely going for a very uh, similar thing, right? You, obviously, the difference here, which is so controversial, was there is uh, real blood in that sneaker. Was the, was the blood involved, was that, a, was that a must from the beginning, or is that oh, sort yeah. of like a, okay, I see. Well, I feel with the Jesus, the Jesus shoe, there wasn't an explicit, obviously I said Nike, but there wasn't an explicit musician or artist collaborating, right? Upon the second iteration, if I could call it that, the second iteration of, uh, I don't know, the sneaker drop, did you know that you wanted to, you know, involve somebody with a high profile such as Lonas? No, I mean, I, I think we, we had this, Kind of in odd. our head, like fairly immediately afterwards. Um, yeah, since 2019, it, like it very just, immediately. Yeah. It, it really yeah. was the case that Lil Nas X just had a story that was incredibly compelling, you know, mm -hmm. all about, I mean, the whole Montero music video, yeah. all of that, it just makes, um, makes a really great story. And this object kind of really speaks to that as well, so it, it just seemed like a match made in heaven. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I think yeah, absolutely. we have we have or some hell. Speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all individually numbered as well. This this oh, really? this has a negative number on it, which what was just we, there are 666 pairs, and then there were some pre some pre like artist editions. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. again, made 666 of these, sold them for 1018. Again, mm -hmm. sold it for the price. People ask the same question can't sell shoes for $1,000, you guys yeah. are crazy. Again, sold out in a second, mm -hmm. not even. You know, technology plays its own, it's its own character in this mischief narrative. And, you know, you take products like Alexa Gate, Spots Rampage, and you guys are making this, you guys are opening this platform for discussion and for commentary. Do you guys feel like you're, you know, explicitly commenting on technology? Are you guys making this sort of unbiased commentary or is it something in between? I wouldn't say that we're, we're certainly not anti-technology. I would say that we are probably generally trying to combat some of the blind tech optimist and tech solutionist uh, products and services that uh, are sort of forced upon us in our daily lives. That's good, that's good. So like, what was the inspiration? Like, how did, how did, uh, yeah. you know, so you come I, to fit a paintball gun on top of this guy and yeah. let it loose in the studio? For sure, so I think, again, we talk about, you said earlier, and again, you guys chime in at any point, but you said earlier, mischief drops have a lot of layers, right? Mm -hmm. And where this was coming from, the core sort of exposition of this, that is that uh, Boston Dynamics is a, I don't want to use the word necessarily military, but I mean they, they got their start. They got their start in the military, but you, but you also think military. Who can afford a seventy-five thousand yeah. dollar robot other yeah. than 
the three of us idiots, right? Yeah. It's usually going to be a large security firm, government, police, military. Mm. And you also think, what are they gonna use it for, right? And Boston Dynamics, Lucas mentioned this, great marketers. You see Spot Dance and Jump Rope and Spot, and spot yeah, Boogies, it's, it's but- like Doing backflips. Yeah, exactly, yeah, but yeah, again, yeah. You ask, we asked the question again, coming up with this idea, okay, but is that really what it's used for? No, you think what is this gonna be used for and... I mean, and, and then you see like several military. several days after we did Spot's Rampage, there was uh, something where the NYPD walked their spot out right, and right. everybody was Talk about very timing. upset about it. I mean, it was like really perfect timing yeah. in that sense. And so much so, and there was so much backlash and outrage over it mm. that the NYPD actually, I think, That's discontinued the their contract with Boston Dynamics. But well, the, so the irony yeah. is we're putting a paintball gun on this. Yeah. And we've also, you want to talk about tech, we developed a platform to let anybody over the internet drive this from their phone, mm. um, which was a whole which was a whole feat, turned it into a, into a multiplayer robot. Even us in person, seeing this and knowing it's a paintball gun, also knowing it when we were practicing, knowing it's a paintball gun we yeah. control, yeah. It you is still frightening. You do not want to walk in front of it and thinking about what that would be like with potentially a real gun or something else is pretty uh, pretty crazy. We never want to be reactionary. Like we won't, mm. our drops are planned out well in advance, right? Like I can tell you we know what we're making through January. So like we know what we're doing well into the future. And for us, we want to build stuff that you could see it today in 2021 or in two years in 2023 and it would still make sense. Mm -hmm. And the issue is when you react to a very quick trend or a fad, it's like, oh, well, that's not around, right? Something we can talk more about is just like, again, you think about a Supreme. They just can't do a digital thing, right? Like they are not structured. Again, they can obviously hire people, but their brand is just so almost lock and key that they don't have the ability to do other stuff, right? They I, can... I would go out to say that they're not creative in the sense that they have one gimmick, logo, slap on the thing. Okay. Sorry. Not this yeah. point right here, but... And, and, and like, they do that over and over. Yeah. That is their that is yeah. their staple, and I think we're very actively not that. Yeah. Sorry to just hate No, you no, no it's good, no. <laughs> Lucas Bentel, on <laughs> record, <laughs> Supreme is not creative. <laughs> No, but in reality, really I actually, even though I'm wearing their yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. I, while well, I do, I'm a fan of their brand, like, personally, they are a cultural icon, I don't think not, they are creative. Not, a, not creative beyond They, they, sw they yeah. slap a logo on stuff, and that is all they do. You look at their fashion, they're, you, again, fan of their work, they are not creative. They mm. put their logo on something, and that's about the extent of it. And I think everything we've done has truly been a first, and that's like, super impressive, right? You think about severed spots. Mm -hmm. Before us, no one ever chopped up fine art and resold it, right? You think about Birkenstocks, no one ever destroyed a Birkin bag. You think about at all costs, right? No one's ever put the price like as that is the main fashion thing. Obviously, Jesus and Satan shoes, first people ever to put liquids in an Air Max and that and is pretty infamous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty uh, infamous. But I think, yeah, I mean, it's really just cool for us because we want to be original, we want to be creative. We're not here just to slap our logo, which doesn't exist, on stuff mm -hmm. and be like, oh, here, that's never what we're gonna do.